back and building them so they integrate well and seamlessly. So we found it to be very important to uh, ask uh, First Special Forces Command to join us and offer their perspectives. And we are glad to have Colonel Josh Retz to uh, join us. He's earned a number of uh, uh, degrees from Norwich, the Marine Corps University, uh, the Army War College Fellow, Near South Asia Center for Strategic Studies, where he took on his fellowship. He's not just an academic, though, as he has spent a large part of his career planning and executing special operations activities throughout the world. He came to 1st Special Operations Command from the second training group within the John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, where he was instrumental in educating hundreds, hundreds of RSOF special operators. No doubt uh, he heard a lot about those tactical needs and himself has experienced them. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome for Colonel Josh Ritz. Well, good afternoon. I'd say that uh, if you were expecting Major General Rick Engel, the commanding general, you might be operating at an information disadvantage. As of Sunday night, he was still looking forward to coming down here and speaking. But uh, as COVID would have it and other things, he's uh, teleworking this week. So I'm grateful to be here. We, we surely appreciate the invitation from Lieutenant General Wood and AFSIA for our participation here. General Engel did ask me to share a few small thoughts on how we think about information advantage. And I'll try to do that here with you today. You'll hear three themes throughout the thoughts. Information advantage is clearly a team sport and everybody has a critical role to play. Having the right people on the team and the right relationships is paramount to winning. And then we'll give you a sense of how we think about effects of information advantage. Clearly, we should uh, cooperate and partner with Taiwan a bit more. They seem to have a, a clear advantage in capturing the flag. Up front, I'd like to introduce First Special Forces Command, especially to those folks not familiar with the command. We're about 24,000 personnel across 11 different Army brigades, and we're a division-level command. We are special forces, civil affairs, and psychological operation units with a robust brigade of sustainers, communicators, and intelligence professionals. On any given day, we operate in about 70 different countries, including continuous combat deployments since September 11, 2001. Our primary mission is to train, organize, and equip Special Operations Forces to support theater, Special Operations Command, and GCCs. We are more than that, though. We are also have the task of operating and standing up an Army Corps of a Contingency Special Operations Joint Task Force. This mission, from crisis through competition, commands and controls soft units and integrates our Information Warfare Center that I'll tell you more about in a bit, to act as a global integrator of information. The command has been closely integrated with the Army on developing concepts to operationalize information advantage. We absolutely view key partners like our cyber as critical stakeholders. We see a nexus for operating below the threshold of conflict, including preparing the cyber domain and information environment to achieve information advantage. Major General Neil Hersey of the Cyber Center of Excellence. They've done a great job conceptualizing information advantage for the Army. So how does this play out in practice? And what does this look like? We are expanding this idea of operationalizing information advantage in some pretty novel and innovative ways. Conducting integrated information warfare with our Information Warfare Center, employment of soft cross-functional teams to see, sense, and impact the operational environment through the exploitation of information and converging multi-domain capabilities of our Special Ops Joint Task Force to anticipate, deter, and when necessary, shape conditions 
for the joint force to win in conflict. I'll review some of the context. It's not unique to us. We share it with many of you. We recognize, along with many of you, the power of information in peace, wartime, and in competition. Some may argue that information is the prevailing factor in the changing nature of war. Special Forces Command acutely understands the role of information across the entire spectrum of conflict. Our adversaries demonstrate their aggressiveness, resolve, and commitment to exploit traditional media, social media, and information systems like cyber, space systems, and physical infrastructure. They manipulate and amplify misinformation, promote the spread of conspiracy theories and disinformation. Our adversaries are actively conducting information operation campaigns, promoting conspiracy theories, encouraging divisive discourse online, infiltrating closed social media groups, and co-opting traditional media to obfuscate the truth. Our adversaries see this as the cheapest, most efficient way to erode our influence with our partners, cause internal division and conflict, and impose costs on our way of life. To counter these actions and compete with state and non-state actors, information warfare operations must be mainstream and integrated into everything we do. Further, if we are going to compete and win, we need to engage at the velocity, speed, and volume to beat adversaries in the information environment. So what's our approach? First Special Forces Command has embraced information advantage as a key aim of all of our operations, activities, and investments. SOF intuitively understands the impact of information, the role of information in warfare as an equal partner of traditional military strategy. Our units are especially trained to operate in all domains, to integrate information, information systems, and action to achieve tactical, operational, and strategic objectives. In this way, we hold the initiative, improve our situational understanding, and retain decision dominance. While the sheer volume, mass, and dedicated resources our adversaries throw at us give them a relative advantage, this advantage is temporal and can be undermined, disrupted, or reversed. Just take a look at the predatory practices that Beijing is using in their strategy. Beijing takes advantage of opportunities to expand its reach, economic influence, and military might. From a competition standpoint, First Special Forces Command is working with our gym partners and allies to highlight such malign behavior in multiple domains and countries. We want to make things difficult for Beijing to operate, but also to continue to impose costs by challenging their influence indirectly. So how are we operationalizing information advantage? Special Forces Command is one of the few commands continuously expanding the contact layer of competition ac across the globe. Our global soft network is equipped with the cultural insight and psychological expertise of our soft operators to see, sense, decide, and act on exploitable information to impose costs on adversaries, present multiple dilemmas, and impact adversary decision making. Despite our, fall, our small footprint, we are persistently engaged with military partners, training and advising allies, and influencing key target audiences. Our global sensor networks identify, disseminate, and exploit opportunities to impose costs, highlight malign actor behavior, and control the narrative in conjunction with partners. In short, we are uniquely trained, organized, and postured to achieve information advantage before a crisis becomes a conflict. The key to this is our network of partners who can act on our behalf using their authenticity and their operational authority and their influence. I want to share key, three key ways we think about and execute this integrated information warfare. We are at a bit of an inflection point. Again, not unique to us. We share it with our, internally to our nation and with our partners. We are faced with the rapid advancement of technology ubiquitous access to information at the speed of the click of a button, and increasingly powerful weapons to disrupt, degrade, manipulate, and even destroy information. We are being confronted with what we call information warfare every day. While we don't have a formal definition for information warfare, our adversaries treat information as a weapon and wield it more 
and more brazenly to increasingly affect. To effectively compete and win in this information environment, we must do more than play defense. We must seize the initiative, control the narrative, and impact information systems and the decision makers behind them. This is where 1st Special Forces Command Information Warfare Center comes in. We have organized our psychological operations forces to form the core of the Information Warfare Center, and they are the critical component of our information warfare capability. They operate from Fort Bragg. They focus on the NDA, NDS threats. They collect PAI using a suite of open source tools and data aggregators to synthesize trends, identify narratives, and key communicators. We leverage our unique cultural and language expertise develop content and engage target audiences online daily. We are also working closely with US Cybercom to deter malign actors and activity in cyberspace. This is just one example of both the cognitive and technical approaches to operationalize, operationalizing the information advantage. While a strictly technical approach may be appropriate for some operations, a balanced approach is key to achieving effects. Our units within 1st Special Forces Command are acutely aware of the information component in everything we do. In conjunction with the TSOCs, US SOCOM, the GCCs, the Information Warfare Center offers the significant advantage of providing forward deployed forces with situational awareness above the tactical level and informed by our intelligence capability with a message that we can craft rightly with the content and if necessary, deliver to target audiences nearly anywhere in the world. Our unique capability to impact the cognitive dimension where beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors are impacted is integrated with our special warfare capabilities to see, sense, and react to events in the information environment. A second key point is our employment of cross-functional teams to see this, sense it, and impact the operational environment. When we say a cross-functional team, we really mean a team that's tailor-built to solve a problem. Usually comprised of special forces, psychological operations, and civil affairs operators, it's really a team built to solve a problem. We compete in 70 different countries every day with our unique access placement and partners. We're the optimal sensors for the higher commands and multinational partners. We are acutely aware of how our near-peer competitors attempt to gain influence, exploit resources, erode trust among our allies, to operationalize the information advantage. We benefit by maintaining a persistent engagement in the operational environment, which allows us to see, sense, and develop opportunities to engage in the information environment. We see this as a critical component of our competition approach. Our civil affairs, psychological operations, and special forces cross-functional teams, augmented by key enablers, act as a sensor network to seize retain and exploit the information advantage through actions in all domains that impose costs on our adversaries. Our ability to build capacity and operationalize our multinational partners to compete in their AORs is also a critical soft capability. I want to highlight the employment of our RSOF cross-functional teams operating in ambiguous complex environments in Southcom. At any given moment, we are building partner capacity with our allied military partners engaging in public support to diplomacy with the U.S. country teams and their host nation equivalents and improving the lives of the vulnerable. Exploited populations through civil affairs operations, which are reinforced through timely, authentic messaging campaigns. Our employment of these cross-functional teams in the Southcom AOR is a model for how we remain competitive and achieve information advantage. We understand the enormity of the challenges in each distinct operating environment and acknowledge we still have work to do and must rapidly scale and expand our collective efforts to achieve a lasting information advantage. Our third and final point is multi-domain convergence of our special operations joint task force to achieve information advantage is key. This past month in July, we deployed our SIGITF to White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico as part of Defender Pacific, an indo pacom wide exercise designed to test our ability to establish a soft task force to deter, shape, and win against a near-peer adversary. We won. We integrated with First Corps as the Joint Force Land Component Command 
and the multi-domain task force to converge capabilities, to impose costs, and introduce multiple dilemmas for our adversaries. In this scenario, it was a war that we hoped not to fight, and through our approach to information warfare, we deterred our adversaries and not only survived, but thrived in competition short of armed conflict. Information warfare played a vital role in shaping the environment, deterring this adversary, and preserving freedom of maneuver in both the operational and information environments. This vital contribution allowed the Joint Force and Army to seize the initiative and dominate the information environment. We learned a few things along the way. The importance of low equity electronic warfare and cyber capable tools to degrade the adversaries anti-access and aerial denial capability proved valuable. Our role as the soft task force integrating information, electronic warfare, intelligence, and other special operations activities is the key to achieving information advantage. The critical piece here is the importance of moving data and information at speed, scale, while protecting the integrity of our command and control structures. Again, this is not unique to us. Many of us are working on the same problem. Protecting both our information and information systems is critical in high intensity conflict. We also learned about optimal integration of our information warfare center and sensitive activities to present multiple dilemmas to our adversaries and enable decision dominance. Controlling the information environment is so crucial to winning in both competition and high intensity conflict. Lastly, on relationships. There may be nothing more critical than the relationships with each other. Now more than ever, we recognize that private industry, commercial organizations, academic institutions, and the open source community is and will continue to push the envelope in the latest tools, methods, and solutions to achieve information advantage. To that end, we have a saying in soft that relationships matter. First Special Forces Command's value proposition is the relationship we foster, develop, and maintain over decades of engagement. The result is a competitive advantage to leverage our broad network, partnerships, and ability to work by, with, and through indigenous partners and allies to continually shape conditions for success and to win in conflict. Winning information warfare is a team sport. We want to foster relationships with organizations that they themselves are on the nice edge of the development and implementation of tools, methods, and technology to address the enormous challenge of information advantage. Strong partners are critical in developing a framework for enabling information advantage, from identifying how malign information spreads online to operationalizing the latest in social psychology and leveraging behavioral economic theory that shapes beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors of these target audiences across the globe. How can you help? We want to bring our data, our use cases, and your domain expertise to establish foundational relationships that leverage our core capabilities. One of our biggest challenges to operationalizing information advantage is organizing the large data sets, synthesizing what is important, and delivering it back to the operator at the contact layer to enable decision making to seize the initiative. We know we must automate some intensive cognitive tasks to enable better decision making and help us to operate at the speed, volume, and veracity of our competitors. There's a lot to learn from academia too, as they are often the thought leaders in the information space. We want to strengthen academic partnerships. We have a handful, we'd like more. And invest in research in critical areas like information technology, cybersecurity, and applied artificial intelligence to educate the next generation of special operations forces. We also need to advance our thinking across soft disciplines like social psychology, behavioral economics, and strategic culture. We can also learn a lot from independent organizations like First Draft and the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensics Research Lab. Both are thought leaders in this information space. So in summary, achieving information advantage is all about teamwork. This is now truer than ever. Whether it, it is adopting to conduct or execute information warfare from the CONUS based in a COVID constrained environment with a new fiscal reality or adjusting to strategic competition after two decades of counterterrorism, 
We cannot achieve information advantage alone. First Special Forces Command must work with the commercial, industry, academia, and the open source community to rapidly develop, experiment, test, and adopt tools, tech, and methods to compete and win in this information space. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. We genuinely appreciate the visionary leaders across the Army and those in this audience who advanced the concept to operationalize information advantage. We are incredibly proud of the progress of our command and optimistic we are heading in the right direction. However, the threats and challenges we face today call for collective action. My final comment before I answer any questions is the idea that information is cross-cutting, interdisciplinary, and powerful to yield. With that, our conception of exploiting information as the instrument of power must continually be broadened and deepened to maintain the information advantage and win. Thank you. Happy to take any questions. So first question, um, how does the first Special Forces Command Information Warfare Center posture to achieve information advantage, and how are you enabling that to be shared across the levels of command? That's a, a great, a great question. We didn't start with a new block of wood that we started to try to roll. Instead, we took a look at what have we done recently that has worked in many cases. Uh, our successes in 20 years of counterterrorism fights um, help us understand how to move information quickly uh, and move it faster than the enemy and move it in ways that allows us to disrupt or defeat enemies. So we pulled lessons learned, positive les lessons learned for the last 20 years. We also have a very close relationship with our own center of excellence, the Special Operations Center of Excellence, uh, who, all, who has a relationship with other centers of excellence, uh, like cyber. So we look to the institutions, because in many cases, that's where new thinking is taking place. They have a little bit more time and space uh, to think about those things. So we're pulling those lessons learned from our institutions. And lastly, we took a look at what is our competitive advantage for the Army, for our nation. For us, it's our general access and placement on any given day. We're in 70 plus countries with uh, anywhere from three to 4,000 soldiers deployed. That access and placement is key for us to leverage we have relationships in each of those places. We have long-standing relationships with partners and allies who also have their own capabilities and unique uh, ways to apply that. So we started with what have we done, what are we doing well recently? Our best practices from our institutions and other institutions, and what is our competitive advantage today? All that combined together gives us the posture to continue in many cases and get better at information advantage. So uh, along with, with that theme, are, how are you coordinating messaging with the coalition and uh, US conventional forces? I guess the first question was a bit of a softball. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, the second question here, also a great question, but a bit of a juggernaut. So uh, for us, it's not unique to us. The process to communicate uh, messaging and messages can be a bit convoluted. And in many cases, this is the slowest part of our, our processes or approvals. From the bottom up, we obviously we can read strategic documents um, and do and process those. And we have our own strategy. And we operate under the strategy of the Geographic Combatant Command. So nothing we do is by ourselves or, or alone. So we nest all of our bottom-up efforts with standing strategic documents and guidance. When we propose something back up from the bottom, we run it back through a process either to Special Operations Command, a Geographic Command, a country team, sometimes back, uh, depending on the, the message or the requirement or capability we're proposing, back to you know, the Pentagon and, and coordinate it with Department of State. But we coordinate all these messages and influence operations at every level. So our, our most junior team member 
at a host nation country team level or partner level is coordinating there at the bottom. And then we will run that all the way up through multiple two, three, four star level commands to make sure that it's uh, nested and appropriate and ultimately approved. But uh, that, that whole process is probably due for a bit of a, a redesign if we're really going to move um, information and messaging at the speed required today. I think we're being told time is up. So. Thanks again. We appreciate uh, the participation and the partnerships with FCA. Twenty six twenty six thousand soldiers, but eighteen commands. That's why we wanted them here. Uh, a great amount of experience, insight, and a whole set of problems that uh, we're all working on. We'd like to make sure it's all done together. You heard Josh mention often uh, we need collective action to solve these things and do it at speed. And so I really do appreciate them coming and sharing their perspective, fostering relationships. Also mentioned and shaping the environment. So you hear the echo of information practice uh, across a variety of elements and units. You heard it from the Germans as well in, in, um, when we heard um, our earlier speaker. So we have spent a good day here with, together. Thank you very much for uh, staying with us. Uh, let's give Josh another hand, please. <laughs> and we'll tell you that on behalf of uh, uh, you, your command, and FCA, we're present a, uh, a gift to the Fisher Foundation, Fisher House Foundation. We're thankful to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at a point of let's get to the reception. Um, at 4 o'clock, it begins down on the floor. The program will wrap with that uh, reception sponsored by Siena and Converge One Government Solutions. We really thank them for helping us and sponsoring this reception, allowing the interaction between you and your peers and additional time with our industry partners. Tomorrow morning, uh, coffee starts at uh, 7 o'clock. Thank you to Verizon again. And at 8, you can choose to attend a second session of Track 1 and on modernization of the Army Unified Network. You heard uh, General Morrison speak of that. Or an Augusta Fort Gordon chapter course on industrial control systems and industrial Internet of Things. The next session here in this space is a keynote presentation from Lieutenant General Stephen Fogarty, which begins at 9.15. Overflow seating for this session at 9.15 uh, will be available in the meeting rooms uh, over on the Riverwalk Hallway. And we really ask you to get here early so you can get a seat. Uh, you really don't want to have a cluster all of, against the back wall. It's not quite as healthy as you'd like to be. That's why we have the overflow rooms. But please, we'll see you here tomorrow early in the seat. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation here. And we'll see you down on the floor. Thank you very much.